Okay. Uh, Wilson Morales from Black Men TV talking to Tori Kittles regarding his role as a regular on CBS The Equalizer. You're coming back for a second season. What are we getting this year that, that we saw different from your character last year? Oh, we get a lot deeper this season. Um, at the end of last season, Dante was sort of at a crossroads of um, is he going to work with The Equalizer? Is he not? He was questioning his role as even a detective, you know, he went to see his father. Um, and so there were a lot of things that, um, that he was carrying throughout that whole season that sort of culminated at the end of the season, which he makes a decision to go um, into a direction that you'll have to find out when you watch on Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> so we to assume that, yeah, like you just said, he's at a crosswell. So he's either going to go one way or the other. We're not going to be in the middle again, right? Yeah, yeah. He's going to, no, he's going to make a decision to be on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Now, do you get to do more this year than you did last year? I always feel like the first season of any show is more of an introductory, trying to map out the character. And then once you know you're greenlit for a second season, the writers can now flush you out. I think there are a lot of things that, that we will explore this season. Um, we touched on a lot of things, the relationship between Dante and McCall, uh, how far that's gonna go. I think we'll get more into that this season, different cases that they may be working on together, uh, how they work together, will they work together? Um, you know, can she trust him? Can he trust her? Um, so, you know, he's still, he's still at first and foremost, he's a detective and he, his role is, is with, you know, the police department. And so she's outside of that. And so it's still a sticky situation in terms of what he can and can't do with her, but he makes a de definitive choice to, to actually start to work with her. Mm -hmm. You know, you came out last year, the first season during the pandemic when a lot more people were at home and they got to watch the show. Now that in some areas, people are starting to hopefully get their lives back together. People are having outdoor events. Obviously, sporting is back to it's, it's kind of seem normal between basketball, football, and baseball. Uh, what's going to get people who didn't catch on the first season to either catch it now or you know and just stay with it? I think you, the word of mouth. More things to do. I think the word of mouth is out there. I mean, we were doing 14 million viewers. Uh, you know, across all platforms weekly and people are talking about the show. I can't tell you how many times I've been out and people are coming up to me and just telling me how much they love the show. And that's whether I've been in Los Angeles or New York or, you know, wherever I, ever my travels have taken me, people are really enjoying the show. So I think the show is getting a lot bigger, more excitement, more action. Um, and the scope of it is broadening. We're shooting more in New York City. Um, so you'll get more of, of the energy of the city, that palette as the city has come back to life as Broadway opens and, you know, more people are on the street. So all of that is feeding into this second season. Mm -hmm. Speaking about shooting, you know, how was it last year compared to this year? You know, are you still going through the regimen of COVID testing and everything else? We're still uh, testing. Yeah, we're still testing every day. Everybody's being safe. The crew is is really, you know, they carry the brunt of that. You know, they have to be masked at all times. I mean, we get to take ours off when we're shooting. Um, but yeah, we're being as safe as we can. You know, the pandemic is still out there. It's still happening. But, you know, most people have been vaccinated. Um, you know, I think there's some rules and regulations that are going on um, to make our set safe. Mm -hmm. and um, safer, as safe as it can be. But yeah, we're still testing. It presents some challenges, but you know, um, with the, in regard to everything that's going on, it, it's nothing. We get to make our show and, and we get to go to work and, and we get to love to do it. You're working opposite Queen Latifah, the star of the show. Obviously, uh, you know, each of you have had experience working on television series. You're working together now. What's that dynamic like? She's majestic. That's why we call her the queen. This is um, our third time working together. We actually worked together for the, the first time was um, 10 years ago. I think it was. Uh, we Steel did Magnolia? Steel Magnolias. We did Steel Magnolias. That was the first time we worked together. And then after that, we did Bessie. Um, you know, I'll, I'm always learning from her. She really is a pleasure and a joy to be around. She has an amazing sense of work ethic, but she also, she, she has a lot of, she has a great sense of humor. Um, so we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of laughs and we get to push each other in different ways. I'm always, um, you know, I feel, I feel blessed and humbled every time I get to, to create a moment with her. 
you play a law enforcement officer, a black law enforcement officer. You know, does it dawn on you playing this role, knowing what's going on in the rest of the world? And, you know, does that give you insight into their, into their jobs? Yeah, I think, um, I don't think you can play a law enforcement officer in this day and age and not be conscious of everything that's going on around, you know, not only this country, but globally um, with respect to how policing is done. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it, you know, um, my great grandfather was a, 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 a sheriff, the first black sheriff in, in the town that I grew up in. Um, I realize it's a hard job to do. Um, and I think there's a lot of learning and growing that has to be done so that we can do a better job of it. Um, and I think, you know, there's accountability that now is demanded more than ever, you know, um, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm conscious of it for sure, you know? Mm. Does the show take into light what went on last year? Or does it somewhat inject it into the, into the season? What do you mean in, in terms of? Uh... Like obviously, you know, I guess, uh, I was, you know, in terms of this, the, the episodes, are, are we dealing, last year some of these shows dealt with COVID, you know, and they implemented it into the show. Does mm. your show do any of that stuff? Um. No, we don't, we don't get into, we haven't, as of this point, we haven't gotten into uh, COVID and its effects on, you know, the society. Um, I, I don't, don't feel like it's something that, uh, or whether we're the type of show that, um, you know, needs to deal with that. I think um, that, you know, a lot of times there are, it's like sort of like things are out there and you know they're conscious, but sometimes you want to watch a show to get away from that. You know, we can turn on the news and talk about COVID. You know, you don't necessarily have to turn on, you know, your favorite show and be reminded of it. Maybe you want to watch your favorite show to get away from that sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, looking back at your career, you know, obviously you're working with Latifah, who started off as a rapper and has transitioned to other things, you know, you was in 50 Cent's first movie, you know? And did you ever think he was gonna go from being this actor to where he is now producing gazillion shows on, on, on different platforms? Absolutely. Um, I think he's one of the hardest working, smartest people um, and motivated, ambitious people out there. Um, he was grinding back then. He was on a mission. And I, don't, I don't think that mission has changed for him. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, just seeing, you know, where he's come from, where we started and being a part of that energy of the first, you know, role that he did, you know, he was, he, he was fascinated with making films and he wanted to learn more and he wanted to be a better actor and he wanted to, you know, he wanted to soak up as much of it as, as he can. So no, I'm not surprised that he's taken, you know, everything that, that, um, that he's, you know, that he learned and, and, and that he's been able to, to push it to where he has. No, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> For you, you know, you've done TV shows, you've done TV movies, you've done films, you know, um, and with this show, now that it's in the second season, there's a little bit of stability there, stability there. You know, when you think back to when you signed on to this, what went into saying yes to the projects you take? You know, uh, obviously there's the people involved, there's the role you have, and there's the writing. You know, a lot of people like to say it's a combination of all three, so is there one particular thing that got you to say, okay, I can do this show? Yeah, I, I before I read the script, uh, you know, they sent it to me and they said, Queen Lativa's doing this, you know, Shaquem, Flavor Unit, um, Deborah Martin Chase, you know, John Fox, John Davis, you know, all of these reputable producers involved. Um, but really it was Queen Latifa. And I just said, I said, yeah, I want in. Um, and then I read it and, you know, and the role sat right. And, um, and it was an opportunity to get to play with her every day. So, you know, and I thought the, the writing was really good. It was very strong. And I felt like where I am in my career, it was the perfect opportunity. You know, all the things that I can, you know, sort of do well uh, fit with this particular guy and at this particular time. And so it just sort of lined up. And then they brought in all of these other amazing actors, you know, Adam Goldberg, you know, Leah Hayes, you know, Chris No. Um, you know, Lisa LaPera and I mean, the amazing Lorraine Toussaint. So you, you bring in all of these people and yeah, I wanted to be a part of that. Absolutely. 
<clears throat> when you're on hiatus, you know, do you get to do outside projects? Do you have time to do outside projects? Um, you know, we didn't have much of a hiatus this year. We, uh, we, we finished the first season the last week of May, first week of June. We came back the first week of August. So there wasn't a lot of time um, to fit anything in in that window. Um, but, you know, as we move forward, depending on what happens with the show, you know, I'm always looking forward to doing other little things, you know, shows, um, you know, jump back on stage, you know, um, I sort of miss, miss the theater. Um, so it's good to be in New York where, you know, plays are opening again. Um, so I'm looking forward to jumping back on stage soon. And uh, I have another independent film that I did actually during the pandemic and we were able to, to finish that. Um, and uh, so that'll be coming out, you know, later this year. So. All right. So before I let you go, what's the name of the film and what plays are you looking to see? Uh, as you know, there are a lot of new shows coming on Broadway. Seven mm -hmm. of them happen to be by Black playwrights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Passover. Um, I'm hearing great things about that. Uh, I want to, uh, uh, um, you know, I, I want to see the, the musicals too, man. I, I, I like, you know, I want to see Hamilton again. I want to go back and see that, you know, the big spectacles. I'm just happy that theater in general is is back and that audiences are coming back to see it. So um, in terms of me looking for what play I will do next, um, you know, I'm, I'm not certain. I'm not certain. The last play I did, I went to, I went to London um, and I worked with um, Richard Eyre and we did the play called Eight Hotels about uh, Paul Robeson and, and uh, Uta Hagen and, and their time when they were uh, doing um, um, Othello and when they took the play and traveled around America. Um, so that was a great experience. So, you know, I, I sort of have like a, a three year cycle where I'm like, okay, it's time to get back on stage. It's time to like, you know, dust the rust off and get on those floorboards. <laughs> but in the meantime, it's always nice to just enjoy the role of Dante. You know, you're on a good platform. CBS is uh, known for like keeping their shows to uh, bring in an audience, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you're gonna be there on the air if I believe it for a good run, you know? <laughs> so is, keep from it your happening. Lips, from your you know? lips to God's I've supported you, <laughs> you know, I was like, hey, I know who you are. I've seen your work, you know? And as you mentioned, you've worked with Latifah three times. I don't think everybody's aware of that stuff. So like, that just tells you there's a good chemistry there. So keep yeah. you doing your thing. I'm always here to support wherever you're at. Stay safe. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, Wilson, and everything that you're doing. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Bye.